This country has a rich history of really funny people. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 British sketch shows. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we've gathered the UK's finest examples of sketch-based comedy programs to give you a glorious run-through of what to watch whenever you're looking for laughs. Number 10. Little Britain Almost very pretty. <laughs> Looks like she's balancing a Malteser on her face. That's right. Molly the Mole. We start with David Walliams and Matt Lucas on a character-based show which serves as a highly unconventional guide to the different social classes and stereotypes in Great Britain. Initially made for BBC Radio, the show's popularity saw it make the switch to TV after just a couple of years on the airwaves. Sex. We've only just met. <laughs> Gender. How utterly absurd. I'm a lady. I do ladies' things. Heavy on self-deprecating figures, parodies of the working class, and controversial skits, the show frequently drew criticism, but also introduced us to countless memorable characters, from the barely-clothed Bubbles de Vere to the chav queen Vicky Pollard. At the end of the week, I'm going to have to fail you. Yeah, but Louise Farrell emptied a whole bottle of Fanta into Shannon's bag, but anyway, Luke reckons he figured him a bacon around the back of the language lab. Number nine, Smack the Pony. And every night... And every single second of every minute of every hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from when I'm at work or whatever. A late 90s phenomenon led by the all-woman troupe of Sally Phillips, Fiona Allen and Doom McKeegan, some said Smack the Pony would never work, but they were wrong. <laughs> Tackling subjects ranging from relationships to sexuality and continually subverting gender stereotypes, the show was unique for featuring very few recurring characters, unlike most other sketch shows of the time, although there were frequent returns to some setups, including the dating agency routine. Hello, my name's Claire, I'm uh, self employed. And Smack the Pony wasn't the last we'd see from show creator Victoria Pyle. She went on to write the highly praised Channel 4 sitcom Greenwing. He is a, um, hamster. Yes. Number eight, spitting image. It's those damn commies that come up with another word. Margaret Thatcher, Ronald Reagan, and even the Queen were some of the biggest names to feature in this series, just not as they'd usually appear. A show which ran for 12 years, Spitting Image pitted puppet caricatures into satirical sketches, poking fun at the political scene and leading celebrities of the time. A free market economy? <laughs> Rubbish! <coughs> what do we call it, David? Socialism. Well done, David. Leaving celebs red-faced on a weekly basis, it frequently homed in on the royal family, famously forcing them into a council flat for one skit. I can't oh. seem to get into the rest of the house. All the doors on this floor are locked. Unfortunately, calls for a return have yet to be satisfied. Who knows what the creators would make of today's politicians? I now declare Parliament open. Okay. Number seven, The Morecambe and Wise Show. Eric Morecambe and Ernie Wise had already established themselves as TV's topmost double act before the Morecambe and Wise show debuted, but the pair were looking to take their careers in a new direction. Snuffbox? I've got one! What might have been a gamble quickly became a classic comedy, with the series boasting big-name celebrity appearances, signature theme tunes and lavish Christmas specials. And a chance here for Steve to... No! <laughs> Morecambe and Wise are often described as one of Britain's best-loved double acts, thanks in large part to sketches like these. <laughs> Number six, Harry Enfield and Chums. Well, they say Willie sometimes, don't they? No way, they're from Cambridge University. They say Pennies. A host of stars appeared as the colourful characters in this hugely popular show, but the eponymous Enfield, Paul Whitehouse and Kathy Burke took centre stage. I mean, nothing dowdy about my pummy, is there? No offence, Pitt. Beginning in 1990 as Harry Enfield's television programme, the show saw the trio create a world crammed full of unforgettable inhabitants, including the arm-swinging adolescents Kevin and Perry, who go on to have their own feature film. A series which went large with everything it did, it tapped into untold corners of British culture and carved its own niche within sketch show comedy. Gracias, Number five, a bit of Fry and Laurie. Right, so, uh, Simon. How did you get on? After appearing together in historical sitcom Blackadder, but before the comedy series Jeeves and Worcester, this show saw Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie hit us with hilarity on a weekly basis. 
Only the chosen one can stop him. Inspired by comic double acts before them and serving as inspiration for those which followed, a bit of Fry and Laurie thrives on clever wordplay, innuendo, and catchy musical numbers. What words would you use to describe your mood, would you say? Take your time. Of its many notable nuances, the show was well known for frequently breaking the fourth wall, as well as routinely satirizing the then Tory government. Well, how much is this one? I would be wrong to let it go for more than 40,000 of your earth pounds. Number four, The Fast Show. Shoot him, you fool! <laughs> I didn't hear any of it, of course. I'm afraid I was very. A suitably quick series with snap cuts from one sketch to the next, The Fast Show immediately stood out from typical TV schedules. Something slightly embarrassing has happened. With Paul Whitehouse taking a central role once more, it's probably best known for the Suit You routine, but several of the show's most prominent characters proved popular enough to score their own spin-off projects. Tim Carey's brilliant, isn't he? He's really funny, isn't he? The match on taxi was great. Yeah, what about my hairstyle? Should I change it? Do you think it would make me look younger? A series with a dedicated cult following, even Johnny Depp lists the fast show as an influence, and fans will remember that the Pirates of the Caribbean star appeared in the final episode. And the frail, delicate English beauty, entwined in a sexual ballet, choreographed by the devil himself, sir. Oh! That's a nice image, isn't it? <gasps> Number three, French and Saunders. Home oh, on the orange dots, les dots orange, as I call them. Oh, the orange dots, yeah. When one wasn't working for the local church in the Vicar of Dibley and the other wasn't gracing screens as a heavy drinker in Absolutely Fabulous, Dawn French and Jennifer Saunders were putting together one of Britain's best sketch shows. Featuring spoofs and satires of anything from Hollywood blockbusters to hammy music videos, French and Saunders proved an international sensation at its peak, broadcasting around the world. You can't Pull the socks over my eyes. Give me one good reason I should keep you. Its stars would eventually be jointly awarded the prestigious BAFTA Fellowship, while these sketches became a blueprint for future comics. Yeah. Yes, but you know, I've been really busy with animals. You can go to another vet, I think, now. No, well, no. we won't get to be on the telly then, will we? Number two, the two Ronnies. No, four candles. Well, there you are, four candles. Our runner-up, a show which largely happened by accident, during a technical issue at a 1970 award ceremony, the then unestablished duo, Ronnie Corbett and Ronnie Barker, were asked to entertain the crowd. Oh, she sounds a right little raver. I don't know how she had the energy. They did so and were spotted by the BBC and were promptly given their own show. And the rest is history. Ali, Ali, nice. Are they, are they nice soft yes. centers, yes. Ali? Yes, sir. Oh, they're all, they're all, be all soft centers. Oh, yes. Yes. The two Ronnies proved innovative, unpredictable, and unparalleled. The series challenged the Morecambe and Wise show as the Beeb's flagship comedy program, with solo sketches, one off scenes, and long running laugh a minute stories. By the late 80s, Messrs. Corbett and Barker were at the very top of their game. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Leonardo's not Indian, Dad. Of course he is, son. Now look at this one. What, The Last Supper? Ah, 12 men sitting around the table for dinner. Where are the women? Uh, I think the thing that, that people get fussed about is that a fox is, is, is a small brown fairy animal, very much like a dog. Um, I don't think they'd be nearly so worried if it was a, a little four-legged car. Full of chips. Is it a documentary? Ooh, Watch channel, please. May I help? <laughs> Michael, look who's come to see us. It's Craig David. <laughs> Number one, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Hey, Ned, I wish to complain about this parrot what I purchased not half an hour ago from this very boutique. Providing surreal animations mixed with live action, absurd comedy and visual gags, and channeling the likes of Spike Mulligan to do so, few comedy troops can boast an impact comparable to Monty Python. Bicycle repairman, how can I ever repay you? While the group also produced films, soundtracks and stage shows, the Flying Circus sketch show is arguably their greatest achievement, showcasing the massive variety that Python offers. Is this the right one for an argument? I've told you once. <laughs> no, you haven't. Yes, I have. When? Just now. The Pythons routinely redefined what was funny, and these sketches have since inspired some of the world's leading comics, from Seth MacFarlane to Matt Stone and Trey Parker. Three layers of matchboxes to clear, and silence over! No one expects the Spanish Inquisition, but today's top spot was never in doubt. Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.